Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA Licensed Aerospace Technician, Airframe, Power Plant, and Avionics Certified. The date today is June 20th, 2016. This video lecture, titled Intro to Gas Turbine Engines, will cover the basic principles of operation of the four different types of gas turbine engine applications, and they are the turbojet, turbofan, turboprop, and turbo shaft. Starting with the compressor assembly here, this consists of an axial flow compressor, multi-stage. In this case, six stages make up the compressor drum, which is then seated in a stator housing case. The stator blades are non-rotating blades, which are seated in between the rotating compressor blades. The stator blades have an opposite blade angle to the rotating compressor blades, so that when the airflow passes through each stage, it allows the airflow to pass through divergent airflow nozzles, allowing the velocity to stabilize while there is an increase in air pressure through each stage. The satters also direct the, direct the airflow at the proper angle between the rotating compressor blades as to prevent airflow separation from the rotating blades. The stators are very important in maintaining an increase in pressure through each compressor stage and preventing airflow separation between the rotating blades as well as stabilizing velocity while increasing pressure. Here we have a turbojet cutaway and of course we have the compressor seated in the stator casing connected to a shaft which then connects to a set of turbine blades also with stators in between them to direct the flow of thermal energy at the proper angle to the turbine blades. When the starter is rotated the entire spool will rotate, air will be drawn in, the air is then compressed and its temperature is increased. The gas turbine engine operates on heat of air compression, much like a diesel piston engine does, is that it increases the pressure of the air substantially as to increase its temperature to ignition temperature sufficient to ignite the fuel. When the starter is activated, the entire spool will rotate along with a spark igniter to, to assist in the combustion. When enough pressure, heat of air compression, and airflow develops through the combustor can, then fuel is introduced into the combustion chamber. This then instantaneously ignites. The thermal energy released is then absorbed by the turbines, which then convert the thermal energy into shaft horsepower to drive the compressor. The starter is kept on for a few seconds longer as the RPM ramps up and the constant pressure state develops inside of the combustion chamber. When sufficient constant pressure is reached, the spool will then suddenly increase in RPM and the engine is set to be lit. This is when the starter and the spark igniter are disengaged and then the temperature required to keep the kerosene jet fuel lit is derived from the heat of air compression from the compressor which derives its power from the thermal energy absorbed by the turbines. The hot gases that escape past the turbines are then channeled to a convergent nozzle which then step down the pressure and increase the velocity. Mass airflow accelerated results in force vector in the direction of jet velocity causing a reactionary force in the opposite direction known as thrust. The turbojet is most fit for supersonic applications in terms of fuel efficiency because at subsonic air speeds below the, air, below the speed of sound, the amount of thermal energy discharged into the atmosphere causes a lower kinetic efficiency compared to a turbofan engine. All this thermal energy is just expelled out into the atmosphere and the aircraft with the turbojet can only go as fast as its jet velocity obeying the law of conservation of momentum. So you don't see turbojets on 
uh, modern airliners in the year 2016 anymore because they're not very fuel efficient under the speed of sound and airliners tend to fly at transonic and or subsonic speeds. Here's an example of a JT-80-219 Pratt & Whitney turbojet engine on an old Boeing 707-120 airliner. As you can see it is a subsonic or transonic airfoil. So this airliner of course does not exceed the speed of sound but 50 years ago nobody cared about fuel economy so the turbojet was implemented. This will swallow up a smaller amount of air and accelerate it to much higher jet velocities compared to the turbofan. The turbofan will swallow up much higher mass airflow and accelerate it to somewhat lower jet velocities compared to the turbojet. In terms of kinetic efficiency, these are not very fuel efficient engines unless they're flying above the speed of sound. So if we look at the gas turbine engine, it has many similarities to any other heat engine, especially the reciprocating piston engine. Here, both the piston and the turbine engine operate by air intake, compression, power, and exhaust cycles. Except, all four cycles happen simultaneously on the gas turbine engine, whereas all four cycles happen intermittently on the piston engine. The gas turbine engine operates on constant pressure combustion, whereas the gas piston engine operates on constant volume combustion. Here's an example of a twin spool turbojet engine. This would be for higher performance supersonic applications. In this core, there's two coaxially seated compressor turbine spools. The black spool here represents the high speed N2 gas producer spool, which is just similar to the previous turbojet that was presented previously. Except the hot gases that escape past the high speed compressor turbine spool, in this case the high speed turbine, are then absorbed by another set of turbines that power a low speed compressor. Here we have a hollow shaft for the high speed compressor turbine assembly spool and then we have a solid shaft for the low speed compressor turbine assembly spool. So these are seated coaxially with needle bearings and lubrication. A twin spool turbojet is most appropriate when the loading and pressure must be broken up into separate more efficient spools rotating at different speeds. This is very important to prevent compressor stall or an airflow separation from the compressor blades causing a blast of combustion out of the exhaust. Sometimes during flight on the older jet engines and even the turbofans, a ball of flame would come out through the exhaust and that sometimes the compressor would stall, meaning that it would still rotate but the airflow would not stay on the rotating airfoils or the blades. So this is just the introduction to the twin spool concept of gas turbine engines because this concept will have to be understood when learning about the turbofan jet engine. This is the second type of gas turbine engine. On this one you have the same high speed gas producer N2 spool like with a turbojet except instead of wasting all that thermal energy out to the atmosphere it is absorbed by a low speed turbine assembly which takes most of the thermal energy and converts it into shaft horsepower to drive the large propeller fan that's ducted and also a low speed compressor which adds to the pressure of the engine by no more than 20 percent. 80 percent of the pressure in the engine is from the high speed compressor and 80 percent of the actual shaft horsepower output is by the low speed turbine stack which is then taking most of the thermal energy and converting it into shaft horsepower to drive this large fixed pitch propeller fan. Most turbofans have 32 blades and they are fixed pitch. 
ducted. The idea is to swallow up a large volume of mass air and then compress the cold air through a constriction duct so that there is a cold air flow stream exhaust around the hot gas stream. 80% or more of the jet thrust is developed by the cold air propeller fan duct and 20% or less is developed by the hot gas core exhaust nozzle duct. The purpose of having a duct around the fan is so that you can increase the jet velocity of the cold air and thus go faster. If this was an unducted propeller fan, the thrust would exist but the jet velocity would not, so it would be limited in its forward flight speed limit and it would be very similar to a turboprop except with more blades that are fixed pitch. This type of an engine, a turbofan, is the most popular type of jet engine on airliners because it has a high kinetic efficiency when flying under the speed of sound. The turbofan also has two streams of air, one going into the compressor and one flowing around the core into the cold air fan duct. This is known as fan bypass ratio, the ratio of the amount of air that goes through the duct for the propeller fan cold air and the amount of air that goes into the compressor to keep the engine running and provide some hot gas jet velocity. Higher the fan bypass ratio means more of the thrust is coming out of the propeller cold air exhaust nozzle. So that's the second type of gas turbine engine, the turbofan. Here's an example of a turbofan jet engine on a Boeing 767-300, specifically the General Electric CF-6. Third type of gas turbine engine is the turboprop. This too has a twin spool assembly. You have a compressor connected to a single turbine that's high speed. The hot gases that escape past the high speed turbine are then absorbed by two more stages of the turbines that are independently seated to the high speed compressor turbine assembly which is the hollow shaft. The low speed is the solid shaft which then transmits most of the thermal energy into brake horsepower to drive the planetary gearing system to drive the propeller. But with a turboprop you have a blade hitch change mechanism so when the propeller pitch is at low, low pitch, that represents low flight speed, but as the oncoming airflow increases, the amount of dynamic pressure and drag also increases, limiting the maximum speed of the aircraft with a turboprop. So the blade pitch governor detects that higher dynamic pressure and limitation for flight speed and will increase the blade pitch, allowing more airflow to slip past the propeller. When this happens, the RPM will not be dominant, but the torque will be. So on takeoff, you're going to have moderate torque and high RPM, but as you're flying through the air faster and faster, the blade pitch will increase, the RPM will drop, but the torque will increase. So you have the same amount of brake horsepower, but now the RPM is low, the torque is high, and the blade pitch is high. So it's very impressive to see a turboprop airplane flying at its top speed at cruise with high blade pitch but very low RPM. So this means that the blade pitch change governor is connected to the fuel control unit. So it's a little different with the turboprop in the sense that when you're changing the blade pitch you also have to change the fuel settings so that the torque is dominant and the RPM is low. You're going to need a lot of torque to rotate at high pitch blade only when at high flight speeds. But at low flight speeds you need a low blade pitch and more RPM. Fuel control unit adjusts accordingly. Here's an example of a turboprop on a general aviation airplane. Of course the 
hydraulic oil pressure is at zero, so the blade pitch is in the flare position. Should there be an engine out condition, the blade pitch will go to flare position to minimize the amount of drag to assist in a, a more successful emergency landing without excessive drag. So we went over the three different types of tur gas turbine engines involved in aviation and propulsion applications. The turbojet is a pure jet and the turboprop and turbofan are a combination of torque and jet. The last type of gas turbine engine is the turbo shaft engine. This is a pure torque application. And just like any other twin spool gas turbine engine, you have a high speed N2 gas producer which draws in air, compresses it, mixes it with fuel, ignites it, and then the thermal energy is absorbed by the high speed turbine the, to drive the compressor. And then the thermal energy that escapes is then channeled to a free turbine which then drives a gearbox or planetary gear drive to let's say drive a generator. So a turbine electric generator would be a turbo shaft engine except the exhaust nozzle would be a divergently ducted nozzle so that thrust does not develop but that heat can also be routed to a heat exchanger or air conditioning system through the compressor. So they call this a power plant because you can get more than just shaft horsepower but also amenities. Here's an example of a Honeywell TPE331 turbo shaft engine with a high power to weight ratio. Quite small but relatively high shaft horsepower output for its size. Here would be a turbo shaft engine on a helicopter and notice that the exhaust nozzle is convergent so you're going to get some jet thrust out of it. but it's mostly set up for shaft horsepower to drive a rotor. And there's the same example on a AH-64A Apache helicopter gunship. This has got two turbo shaft engines on it, also with a convergent exhaust nozzle for a little more thrust, but these are used for shaft horsepower via gas turbine engine core, one on the right starboard, one on the left port, transmitting their shaft horsepower to the main rotor. Then of course the main rotor has a drive shaft that drives the anti-turf rotor. So this is all turbo shaft powered helicopter gunship. So those are the four different types of gas turbine engine applications. The turbo jet, the turbo fan, turbo prop, and the turbo shaft. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day.